Hey YouTube, so I am here reporting live from the car on my lunch break, but y'all already know I had to come and give y'all my take on the Has and Have Nots, this is season 5, episode 27, titled The Damned Defibrillator, 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 I don't know, y'all know what I'm talking about, okay, that machine in the hospital, okay, like that is not a common word I use every day, but anyway, that's beyond the point, if this is your first time on my channel, please be sure to click that subscribe button, I promise to give you good commentary, and I promise I know how to pronounce all my words okay um besides defib defibrillator but whatever um please click that like button click that subscribe button and if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much for all of your support okay so now the real reason why we're here okay so let's jump in okay so the episode starts off where it left off okay hannah then stabbed malik in his shoulder okay and he is bleeding out now she's not no killer okay so she ain't gonna like try to get the job done what hannah did hannah got up could barely get herself together but ran out the house screaming help okay she is knocking on every neighbor's door and i guess ain't nobody home right now because ain't nobody responding to her okay meanwhile she's scared of malik but he's scared of her because he didn't come in the house for all of this okay it wasn't supposed to get physical so he gets up he's like limping out the house and he notices the black van candace and rk are watching all of this okay when hannah ran out the house rk was like dang she bleeding like what happened Happen. okay so when they see malik run out um he's like saying like help help and um candace opens up the van door for him he gets in then rk speeds off okay he was given orders by candace okay so at this point hannah is still all over the neighborhood she is screaming Derek is fixing the ac with one of his friends but then he's like i hear somebody screaming then he recognizes like oh it's hannah's voice so there he goes he runs to the rescue she's hysterical oh my gosh there's a man in my house there's a man in my house and he just sees blood so he don't know what to think so he's like okay just stay right here i'm gonna scope it out okay so he goes inside like he's checking everything out he realizes the coast is clear okay so he comes outside tells hannah the coast is clear he is gone hannah's like you have to call the police you have to call the police so of course he's like okay i will get the police on the phone okay so there was that whole dramatic beginning scene okay so um next thing you know we see jeffrey jeffrey is at the hospital because he is not leaving his father's side but he does walk out of the room because his father is in like he seems like he's in pain he's like moving around a lot so jeffrey goes out to the front desk to the nurse that's on duty okay the nurse that's on duty is a male we find out his name is madison which i'm like hmm I never met a male Madison, but I like it, okay? So, um, uh, Madison tells him, like, I'm sorry, I can't give your dad any more pain meds for a couple more hours. And then, so Jeffrey is like, okay, cool. And, you know, he introduces himself. I was kind of sensing this, like, flirtatious vibe, and I'm like... People are just always so attracted to Jeffrey, which, I mean, he is a, a fine thing to look at. But I'm like, dang, Jeffrey, like, you ain't even got to try, okay? <laughs> so, um, next thing you know, um, the, a door shuts, like, um, the door to David's room. So, Jeffrey is like, is it visiting hours right now? Like, did you see somebody go in there? Madison is like, nah, boo, I was too busy looking at you. Okay, he didn't say that, but that's what he said in his head. So then Jeffrey is like, okay, okay, whatever. He thought he saw something, but he's like, okay, so let me just go in there. When he walks in there, the ice slash fire queen herself is in there staring at david in his bed hovering over him okay so at this point jeffrey he straight up tells her like mama or not like you he says get your a out of here and she she was like excuse me come again and he was like like i said get your behind out of here she was like girl please y'all know veronica the shade never stops okay so then jeffrey gets like a little bit hood okay like this whole series i've never seen jeffrey get hood like jeffrey seems like the type he was just raised in the suburbs right like he probably never ran or went around any of his mother's family or cousins or anybody okay but in this moment he convinced me that he did okay because he was like he got 10 percent hood with her for a second he was like i'm not playing with you you need to get your ai out of here okay 
And so she's like, I know you're not playing with me, okay? You only play with uh, male body parts. So I'm like, Veronica, like this is a serious moment. His father is in the hospital. You see the burns on his back, but she don't care, okay? So he tries to grab her. He was like, I said move. And she was like, boy, you better stop manhandling me. I mean, girl handling me. So then he was like, like I said, get your A out of here. And then she was like, I'm here to see my husband. He said, okay, well, I'm gonna call security. You're not supposed to be in here anyway. And she was like, well, what you gonna tell him? Like, what? I, I can't come to see my own husband? The man I've been married to for 25 years? I'm not going nowhere. And I'm thinking, Veronica, you were married to this man for 25 years, and yet you're like gloating in the fact that he is in this position on this bed because of you you're sick in the mind okay okay so um jeffrey was like if you go near him and she was like what you gonna do you gonna stab me and then she was like try it and you'll be laid up in here with him too and i'm like jeffrey okay chill out we gotta be more strategic about this because your mother's not playing okay she's she's dead serious so she's like you ruined my life and Jeffries was like, I did not. She said, yes, you did. You and your father ruined my life. And then he said, okay, I'm gonna try this a different way. I'm gonna ask you nicely, please leave. So then she was like, he walked on me. He walked out on me for um, some little Jezebel, this little floozy. And so um, she was like, and she's dead and she's burning and I pray that she is burning in hell and I'm like who prays that somebody is burning in but we know you don't pray Veronica so it's cool um and then she's like and you Jeffrey you're just such a disappointment and Jeffrey is like okay bump whatever you saying I've asked you several times to leave she's like I'm not going anywhere so then in this moment she starts moving towards his bed okay Jeffrey is like don't touch him okay do not touch him because he don't know what she's capable of so at this point Veronica has, is holding her purse her little pocketbook and she literally like hits him with her purse and so Jeffrey is like what are you doing stop she hits him again and she's like wake up wake up Jeffrey is like mom stop 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 she's like you ruined my life wake up and keeps hitting him like the man ain't already in pain so at this point Jeffrey don't know what to do okay he grabs the let me get this word right okay the defibrillator okay he grabs the little machine okay with the little two little shock handles and literally like shocks her and she falls out and i'm like oh well that's all it took oh okay whatever so um she falls out but when she falls out like it was kind of fake it looked like she was halfway smiling but that's just my opinion okay so now back to Benny so Benny is in the hotel lobby at the artesian okay and his phone rings and it's Mitch Mitch is like yo bro where you at um Benny tells him and then so he asks him like um well he tells him he's at the hotel waiting for Candace so then um Mitch asked him like can you get a room like and so Benny is like why and so he's like look my family is still after you they can't get to the guy that actually did it and so they're still after you for uncle Vinny. i know you're innocent and all that but like please like you need to lay low at this moment benny notices like there is like some suspicious looking guys around at the bar two of them and they're just like staring at him intensely and so um benny tells um mitch about these guys at the bar and then he's like so mitch says ask them if um go up to him and ask them if his name is ken and i'm like dude if this is like your family member that wants to kill Benny, why would he be like, hey, is your name Ken? Like, he gonna tell him? Okay, whatever. So, um, Benny just yells out like, hey, yo, man, is your name Ken? And so, the dude was like, no. But he's still staring at Benny like he's out for blood. Okay, so Mitch tells him, look, either you need to get a room or you need to stay out in public, okay? Do not go home. Cool. So now we get back to Veronica. Veronica is in her own hospital room in the hospital bed, okay? She wakes up. They ask her, like, what's your name? What is today? They want to make sure that, like, she's still coherent. Um, they said her vitals are fine. And they asked her who did this to her. And this is the nurse and the doctor asking her. She's like, my son. My son Jeffrey did it, okay? He shocked me. He got that machine and shocked me. I want to press charges, okay? Call the police. They need to come and get him in a 
arrest him now. And so the doctor and the nurse is looking like, dang, some type of family y'all got. Okay. So next thing you know, we go back to Mitch, okay? Uh, Mitch is down to the bar, okay? The bar where Uncle Vinny got stabbed. He's there with Victor and Tom. Victor is the bar owner, and Tom is like, I guess he's a part of the Malone family, okay? So, basically, Tom updates Mitch. He tells them, he tells Mitch that um, the Malone family, they're trying to get someone um, in the Wyatt's jail cell so they can take care of Wyatt that way. Meanwhile, they're working on trying to call this hit off of Benny, but when they put a hit on somebody, they basically, it's like, okay, I want you to take care of this person. So then they call another person who calls another person who calls another person who then has to get the job done. So there's several people they have to go through just to call this hit off. So um, he's like, just tell your friend to lay low. So, uh, Mitch is like, like really concerned, like, okay. So he tells, Tom tells them they're working on it. Um, and then Tom says, oh yeah, by the way, your friend has a pavement coming up. And Mitch is like, you know, he didn't buy the car, right? Like he didn't end up getting the truck. And then he was like, okay. And your point is what? He still owed a pavement with interest. So like Mitch is trying to convince them like, Hey, look, he was trying to come back down here to bring the money to uncle Vinny when all this happened. Like, can you please just cut him a break this time? Like he can't afford the interest like please like can we just let it slide this time and uh, so he's like pleading for them to give Benny a break and so Tom was like so you like the blacks huh I'm like the blacks like I've never heard of it referred to like it like like that before like the blacks and so uh, Mitch is like look he's a good guy he's my friend clearly the Malone family is racist okay and so um, Tom was like I've never met a good black guy and I'm like okay um okay like y'all just a whole different kind and so Tom was like um, if he has the money and the interest then I won't break his legs um, but if he doesn't have it then I'm gonna have to break his legs so Mitch is like, come on, you know what, fine, I'm gonna go to Grandma Rose and we'll see about this. And so the dude is like, go ahead, like she knows the rules better than I do, she gonna tell you the same thing. Little does he know, like Grandma Rose got a soft spot for Mitch, so she may make an exception for Mitch. Okay, so um, next thing you know, we see Jeffrey once again by his father's bedside, okay? Um, he acts like he didn't just shock his mama and, you know, put her up in the hospital room, okay? Um, so, David is, like, waking up from his sleep, and he says, Jeffrey, how's your mother? So, Jeffrey was like, I don't care. And then, so, David says, you could have killed her. So, Jeffrey is like, ah, oh, dang, you heard all of that? So, that makes me think to myself, like, dang, like, did you hear, David, did you hear when Veronica said that, um, you left her for Erica and that now she's burning and she hopes she's burning in hell. Like, did you hear all that? Cause that, dang, that's a whole problem. Okay. We just trying to keep this information from you. Okay. Um, so, um, Jeffrey was like, um, David said he did hear all of that. Jeffrey was like, I wanted to kill her. And then, so David is like, um, don't say that. Jeffrey was like, well, it's the truth. And so David is like, no, I don't want you to be like your mother. Like, she's that type of person. Jeffrey is like, I'm like you. And he said, yes, I get that. But, like, your mother, she's just so angry. And I don't want you to be angry in that way. So then Jeffrey says, she's an evil, sick person. Period. Point blank. And David was like, still, she's your mother. And I think you should go check on her. And I'm like, David, like... Even after all of this, like, you still got a heart. You're a good person. So that lets me know you're going to die because the good people die off the show, okay? Like, way before the bad people die. But whatever. And so, um, Jeffrey was like, no, straight up. I'm staying right here with you. Okay. So then Nurse Madison, he walks inside the room, okay? He asks um, David how he's doing, but of course he wasn't expecting a response. That's just like regular like nurse talk. And he tells him like, he starts administering his pain meds, okay? So then David says, how's my ex-wife? And um, Madison was like, um, well, what exactly happened to her? He knows that she's in the um, in her own hospital room, but he's like, what happened? 
he wants to hear their side of the story so jeffrey was like i shot that b like <laughs> straight up and so i'm like jeffrey like you just don't even care right now your like whole attitude is like lock me up throw away the keys i don't care i'm tired of her so um david is trying to stick up for his son he's like it was an accident it was an accident and so madison is like you know you could have killed her right like that is not a toy and so um, David, um, he tells the nurse, like, hey, I know you're trying to give me pain meds. He's trying to change the subject. He's like, I know you're trying to give me pain meds, but I want to be awake. And I need to make sure Veronica's not coming in this room. If I'm asleep, I can't make sure of that. And then so the nurse is like, okay, look, you're going to be awake and in pain or you're going to be sleep pain free. So David was like, I'll take the pain. The nurse is like, too bad because I already gave you the pain meds. Okay. Um, so then, um, Madison was like, um, Jeffrey, your mom told me that you did it. And Jeffrey was like, I did do it. So Madison was like, you cannot tell me that. Cause if you tell me that, then I have to call the police. And Jeffrey was like, Hey, don't risk your job. Do what you got to do. Like, I don't care. I'm a G. I will go out. I did it. I'll tell you I did it and I'll do it again. Okay. So something tells me he's not going to call the police because he's a good guy. Okay. So then we see Derek. Derek has walked out of, stepped out of Candace, not Candace, Hannah's house so that he can call Catherine. He basically wants to update Catherine like, look, your condo, um, which is where Hannah lives, it got a little messed up. I just want to give you a heads up because I know you like to know these things. By the way, this is also my way of telling you that your friend got into a little scuffle when she had a break in in, in her house. So you need to come over and check on her. Catherine is like, I am on my way, okay? I want to make sure she's okay. Now, mind you, when he called Catherine, before she even answered her phone, it's like the camera showed Catherine in bed, but, but Jim was asleep in bed on the other side of her. And I'm thinking like, wait, hold up, hold up. Like, I know you've been staying at the house, which is supposed to be one day, but it didn't turn into forever. Like, why in the world are you sleeping in the same bed as her? Like, y'all can't stand each other, okay? And so, um, when she gets off the phone, um, all of a sudden Jim was like, who was that? And she's like, um, excuse me, what are you doing in my bed? I'm thinking, Catherine, you think of the same thing as me. Like, why are y'all in the bed together? So you mean to tell me you was sleep in the bed first, knocked out, turned the other way, and then he scurried his behind in bed? Uh, no, not gonna happen, okay? And that's exactly what Catherine said. She was like, look, there are six other beds in this house and multiple rooms. You could have chose any other bed. He said, well, what does it look like I'm doing, okay? I'm sleeping. I'm thinking like, girl, y'all been married all this time. Time. I mean, y'all was sleeping in the bed for a long time. I can imagine y'all were sleeping in the bed together for a long time and nothing was going down. So this is normal to him, you know, whatever. Um, so Jim's phone rings, okay, saved by the bell, and it's Jeffrey. Jeffrey basically tells him, like, look, I need some help. I need someone to guard my father's door. I already contact the FBI. The FBI said that they, um, they're not able to do it, so can you please take care of that for me? And so Jim was like, okay, just stay by his side until I get someone there for him. Cool. So then when Jim gets off the phone, Catherine was like, well, who was that? So Jim was like, well, two can play this game. You didn't want to tell me who you was on the phone with. Like, trust me, you don't want to know who I was on the phone with. And so Catherine automatically assumes like it's some like call girl or something. So he was like, she was like, uh-uh, go be with your little side chicks, whatever. Okay. And so um, after she walks out, Jim calls somebody named Patrick and tells him he needs help. So Patrick must be the person that's connected to like security for David. Okay. So then we have Justin, okay? Justin pulls up um, in front of somebody's house. Maybe it's Hannah's house. I don't know. But um, Justin pulls up and he's like on his cop duty and he's supposed to be there for backup. Now, when he pulls up, the other officer there is not happy that he's there. He's like, dang, you was the only one on call? They couldn't have sent nobody else? Okay, like Justin ain't got no friends in the city, okay? So then Justin was like, yeah, I'm here, so what's up? And so, um, then the officer tells him, like, look, this guy is standing in front of this lady's house. He won't move, and he refuses to give me his identification. And I'm thinking, hold up, pause, stop. He refuses to give you his identification because 
I'm pretty sure anybody that looked like me or is in my family, they wouldn't be able to get away with refusing to give up their identification to the police. Like, it would be a whole problem. Y'all wouldn't be sitting there staring at us, um, calling for backup. Like, okay, whatever. So then Justin goes up to him and he asked him, um, I th what did he say? What are the exact words? Um, yeah, my bad. Justin goes up to him and tells the man to take his hands out of his pockets, okay? The man, he proceeds to take his his hands out of his pockets and punch um, Justin straight in the face. So I'm thinking like, what? What is this, okay? Now, first of all, that was a whole problem for me, okay? That the man that insulted a police officer and out of the two police there, Justin and the other police, neither one of them like grab for their firearm they didn't grab for a baton they didn't grab for nothing because a black male could not just get away with like punching a police officer square in the face for no reason are you serious like that was like maybe it's realistic to like anybody that's not black but that was like what like you can't just do that okay whatever so justin gets mad he starts like punching him back by this time the man then already like um got on the ground on his knees and he's putting his hands behind his back to get arrested so i'm thinking like is this a setup like this is weird okay at this moment i totally forgot that the malones was working on getting somebody in wyatt's jail cell okay so this was the setup for that Okay, makes a lot of sense. How do I get arrested? Go and assault a police officer, okay? You're lucky you just got arrested. You didn't get physically hurt. Okay, um, so then we see RK, okay? RK is driving the van. Now, remember, Malik is in the back seat of the van, and Candace is in the front seat with RK. He stops the van in the middle of nowhere, and um, then he's like, okay, what do I do? Like, is he dead? Candace turns around and was like looks like it to me like i'm like dang he did bleed all the way out like they didn't put no pressure on it or nothing like dude probably is dead so um candace was like okay well just check his pockets then so rk i mean he's a thief so he's like okay i'm i can do that that's simple so he checks his pocket finds a wad of cash and i'm thinking like y'all correct me if i'm wrong did he get this cash from hannah's house maybe this is benny's cash that he was trying to give back to uncle Vinny. I don't know. I think I'm on the right path, but y'all let me know. Okay, so they get this wad of cash. They're super happy about it, okay? At this point, Candace tells RK to get out of the van with her. They get out. Um, she rips a piece of her skirt, asks him for a match, and then throws, like, lights um, the piece of her skirt on fire, throws the match in the van, and the whole van just lights up on fire. And they proceed to walk away from the van, okay? So this whole van and the man inside is going to burn to death. I'm like, dang, fire is like a reoccurring theme for the haves and the have-nots, at least for like the past season or two, okay? Um, so the next thing you know, um, when they walk away, um, Candace turns to RK and she tells him that she's a survivor, okay? RK is like... Um, um, well, you dang right about that. And then, so Candace was like, let me make this clear. You didn't see anything, so don't say anything. He was like, okay, Scout's honored. Like, I didn't see nothing. I ain't gonna say nothing, okay? So then she asked, like, will anybody miss him? Did anybody know that he was with me tonight? And so RK was like, um, his baby mama might miss him, but she doesn't think that he was with you. She thinks he was with me, but I got it under control. I can handle this. And she's like, okay, cool. So then he asked her, since they're just walking, you know, away from the fire, like ain't nothing happened. He was like, um, so you think I could run my own girls? Talking about like the prostitution ring at the hotel. And she was like, yeah, definitely. And he was like, good, I think I'm ready. She's like, okay, well, great, you can have it. It's all yours, because I'm done with that life, okay? I got me some cash now, I'm good. And then, so he's like, okay, so what are you gonna do? So this kind of had me looking at RK sideways. Like, why do you ask Candace so many questions? And why does she answer all your questions? Why are you so intrigued with her life? You're an informant for someone. Maybe for Great Value Obama, but we'll see, okay? And, um... So Candace is like, it's too much death around here, okay? It's too hot out in these streets. And so RK looks back at the fire and was like, yeah, literally. And so Candace is like, I gotta get away from here. He asking her where she gonna go and she's like, I have no idea. 
okay and then so rk tells her like you have nothing to worry about i'll hold it down while you're gone um but do you think your mother's okay and candace was like well she in a better position than he is so i don't know but i'm not really trying to talk about this right now okay cool so then we see Hannah and Derek sitting on the couch at Hannah's house. The police officer is there. They're questioning her about what happened that night with the break-in. She's given um, as many details as she can. She even gives them Candace's phone number. And um, they tell her that she'll be back the next day. Uh, that they'll be back the next day with more questions. Don't go in the kitchen because, of course, they need to take fingerprints and all that. And Derek um, informs them both that like he'll be staying there with Hannah that night and so he been waiting to stay in her place but this time it's supposed to be to protect her so okay um so um then Derek when he lets the police officer out he comes back in and asks Hannah if she's okay this was like the weirdest scene ever yeah okay Hannah was like um yeah I will be okay I mean honestly there's only one other time in my life where I've ever been this this scared it was when I was 18 and I was raped okay yeah when she said that Derek started bawling crying okay like he'd have known Hannah his whole life now it's sad when somebody tells you like they were terrified in life and they were like raped but like the way that Derek reacted was like it was personal like he already knew that information like he felt bad or something like you should feel bad but like he personally felt bad like he did it or something I'm like yeah don't let a, a few episodes go by and I see this lion tattoo on Derek, y'all. Like, Derek been knowing all this time that he was the one that raped um, Hannah. Like, that's gonna be like, yes, Tyler, okay? I've been saying this, okay? Yeah, whatever, okay? So, this scene, he was, like, super emotional. He was like, I'm so sorry. And so, Hannah's like, it's okay. He was like, no, it's not okay. And I'm thinking, like, did you do it, okay? So, then, Hannah's like, uh, well, he tells her nobody deserves, well, Hannah says nobody deserves that, okay? I, um, I, but thank you. I really appreciate your concern. And so, Derek is like, look, you don't have to be strong, okay? I can be strong for you, okay? I'm here. Let me help you carry this. And Hannah's like look I don't even know if that's possible he was like can you please just try okay at this point she's more dry eyed than than he is like like he the one that that got robbed okay so um he's like I'm here for you and then she's like okay but you ain't got to stay here tonight he's like no I want to she said no I'm sure Benny's coming home and um He's like, no, I, I really want to. He's not here right now. And then she was like, okay, well, I'll call. I got still got to call Benny. He was like, don't worry about it. I'll call Benny and I'll call Candace for you. So she flipped. She's like, I don't know why you call Candace. That girl don't care about me. She don't care about nobody. Actually, she's gotten 50 times worse since her baby died. And I'm like, well, what do you expect, okay? And you really haven't been there to, quote, unquote, comfort her, okay? All you did was blame her. Okay. Um, so, um, then Hannah goes a step to say, I don't know what else to do. I can't even pray for her anymore. And Derek is like, you can always pray for her. Like my mama always prayed for me. That's how I got out of the way that I was living. I'm like, how was you living Derek? Whatever. So then Hannah was like, you know what hurt me so bad? God told me one day to stop praying for her. And that really hurt me. And I'm like, God told you to stop praying for her. Like, Hannah, I, I really be questioning you sometimes because you just be saying some off-the-wall stuff, okay? Like, God told you to basically, like, give up on her. Like, um, okay, Hannah, I'm looking at you out the side of my eye. Okay, so then um, Derek tells her, like, look, let's pray for Candace right now. She needs it, okay? And then Pastor Derek comes before the congregation, yeah, okay? He is ready to say this heartfelt prayer, but he couldn't even get all the way through it because he started breaking down crying, and Hannah started comforting him. And I'm like, Derek, hold on. This was supposed to be, a, this was supposed to be about Hannah, and now all of a sudden, she comforting you. Like, why are you so emotional, okay? Are you feeling some guilt? I don't know. Okay. Um, so the next thing you know, we see Justin bring the inmate that he arrested into the jail. And of course, we realize at this point, like, it was a Malone setup. So, yes, the inmate is so happy to be in Wyatt's cell. At this point, Wyatt was happy to see Justin, like, oh, you got my stuff? 
no he doesn't have your stuff but justin was like but i did bring you a playmate for your cell he has a propensity to violence so he should you know really enjoy being in your cell with you and he just teases him about these drugs and of course still doesn't give it to him okay um so um justin walks away from the cell he's happy he's like wyatt is about to meet his maker okay so next thing you know um wyatt looks up at the guy and was like hey what's up the guy is just staring at him okay he's waiting for the perfect opportunity and the guy does not speak back to him okay um so next thing you know we see Derek back at hannah's house okay he brings her tea in bed he wants her to calm down um and they're just having like small talk because she's still shook up okay um he eventually convinces hannah to let him call benny and uh, let benny know like what's gone down he knows benny's gonna be upset but he's gonna call benny anyway meanwhile the doorbell um there's a knock at the door it's Catherine. Derek lets her in and then gives them some privacy um Catherine comes into the room and hannah basically updates Catherine on everything that happened that night okay so then we see benny at the hotel yeah okay benny's phone rings and it's mitch calling okay so mitch is like yo benny um stay where you at i'm on my way to get you now okay because if mitch is with benny they're not gonna shoot at mitch okay so then benny is like i don't know man like they looking real crazy right about now and he's like just stay there okay just stay there cool so the malones at this point they eyeing him real hard at the bar okay they're waiting for him to make one move and they're gonna be on him like white on rice okay so then um benny calls candace but gets the voicemail he calls her again and she finally picks up the phone he wants to know where she's at but he can tell that he can tell that she's talking different okay so she lets him know like she's outside walking it's a long story basically like she agrees to come to the house tomorrow morning to talk to him and her mom about the money okay cool so then Derek walks outside of Hannah's house and he calls Benny Benny is like irritated at first but Derek is able to calm him down he gives him an update on what's going on but he really couldn't go into a lot of detail but he knows that a man broke into the house so Benny is standing up like what's going on let me talk to her let me talk to her Derek is like not right now like I just calmed her down um but you do need to get home though so in this moment Benny forgets all about his life being in danger he forgets that he just got off the phone with mitch and mitch told him don't move stay in a public place don't go nowhere but benny like all his screws in his head are loose okay so he he gets up anyway and starts walking out and what the malones get up right behind him okay so the Malones are really close up behind Benny and Benny had the nerve to walk into a parking garage. Why? Like in every single freaking movie, like bad stuff happens in parking garages. So why Benny did that, I don't know. But as we expected, um, the two people that are following him, they attacked him, okay? He starts wrestling back and forth with them, but Benny got hands, okay? So Benny was able to like knock both of them out, but then a third one came out of nowhere and had a gun. So Benny is like, oh shoot. So he starts running, runs behind the car, they shooting at him shots fired shots fired at this point benny hasn't been hit but i don't think mitch gonna get there like quick enough so we shall see what happens in next week's episode y'all please if you made it this far and you're not a subscriber you may as well click that subscribe button and like 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 this video share comment below so we can have good conversation okay i'll see you guys in my next video bye